Hello everyone and welcome back to Max TV Original. Today we will be doing BGA rebowling on the chips and I will explain step by step. Everyone does it differently but uh, well I'll be explaining the way I do it and there's a few odd ways that I do it. Um, so we're going to be redoing this uh, chip today because uh, it's a bit dodgy on this uh, Grass Valley video board. So uh, the first step we're going to prep the board and I've already done that here before I actually started shooting and then I thought oh, I better do this video. So uh, first we're going to do is uh, make sure there's nothing around it uh, where the heat is going to be such as uh, crystals or oscillators. Uh, what else? Uh, LEDs, capacitors. Uh, if you have any capacitors, let's say, or something that you can remove, do remove it. If you have, say, SMD capacitors like uh, those ones, uh, you know, and you can't remove them, then uh, what you do is you put captain tape on them. And on top of captain tape, we're going to be putting foil as well. So captain tape will ensure, like, this is a crystal here and it's very close vicinity to the chip. So um, I've put captain tape over it and, you know, everything else. Like, for example, if we would be doing, uh, say, uh, this, this chip, uh, then I would have to remove that port. So there we go, because it's plastic and we don't want it to melt. So after we've uh, taped, where is the chip? There it is. After we've taped everything around that we want to protect, such as chips, memory modules, uh, there's two oscillators here, uh, we're going to take RMA flux. By the way, grab a pen and paper just so you can take notes on stuff that I use. So I've got this um, RMA uh, two, 218 flux uh, that I use for desoldering and a bit of for soldering. And what you do is coat three uh, sides of the chip with it. You don't need to use a kilogram of it, just uh, use enough to you know, seal the four, three edges. Leave the fourth one open, uh, because if you seal the fourth edge, then you will end up having a seal that where the flux wouldn't be able to flow. So if you do three, there's enough air for flux to flow into, but if you seal all four sides, then there'll be no space, uh, put it that way, you'll create like a little pressure vessel where the flux wouldn't be able to flow through. So as you can see, I've got it, uh, three sides of the chip with the flux and I left this side open. Then the board is ready for desoldering. So I'm going to be using my BGA machine. So if you remember in the previous video in that link we've built this machine, you may have built your own version with uh, floodlights. So we will be using that with a preset profile. So if you're interested in temperatures and all of that, uh, watch this video with a link above and uh, you'll see everything, all the temperatures you need. So let's now take the board and put it onto the table. You can always uh, start doing the foil uh, in those two parts here. So just cover this and this and then the other two sides we can do foil whilst it's on the little PCB table. So I've just done two sides first. As you can see, there's only chip sticking out. And then I'll do this side as well. It's just uh, standard aluminium foil that you, for your cooking, you can find that probably in your kitchen cupboard. And then I'm going to stick this into the machine, this side in, and then I'll add a bit of uh, foil on top here as well. So as you can see, I've um, installed the board in the machine. There's not much space. So I'll see if I can get the light maybe better so you can see the chip there. It's right there. So now don't forget to set up your sensors. So I've got my top sensor here. And the bottom one's already set. So I will add that piece of foil just here. When, the, when you're doing the sensors, make sure the sensor sits as close to the chip and the board as possible, so in that corner there. So if that's the board and that's the chip, the sensor should be sitting just on top of the board in that corner of the chip. So we'll start that now. And the process has started. And we're going to wait until that heats up and then um, we will return and I'll remove the chip. I recommend using a little vacuum tweezers. Uh, they are very cheap on eBay. 
can pick it up probably for a couple of dollars just like this one here uh, the trick is the needle that it comes with is easily comes off so what do you want to do you want to take a little bit of PVA glue and you want to add it around and glue that needle on that will seal that uh, suction thing very well and it's as you can see it's very very good becomes uh, good then if you don't do that it leaks the air everywhere and they, it doesn't remove the chips at all excuse the noise it's at the last stage i've got an exhaust fan happening and it should uh, beep any second you will see smoke coming out of it you would never need to touch the chip to see if it's disordered this station will disorder it definitely so i'm um, just waiting for that uh, ready signal so here it is it is now ready so now we're going to take the chip, I'll get the sensor out. And as you can see, the chip is desoldered really nicely right there. It is a bit smoky, so we'll set the chip aside on a piece of uh, paper towel or a tissue. As you can see, that uh, little suction cup holding it very, very well. So I'll put that down. And now let's get the board out of there. So here's the chip. It's really nice and shiny. As you can see, it's a very clean remove. Some pins you will notice will be very dull. Um, I don't see any on this one. But sometimes you'll see that uh, you'll, uh, you'll have blobs of solder and uh, odd pins would be really grey and dull. That's the faulty pins that uh, caused your trouble in the first place. So first what we're going to do is add just a little drop of RA flux onto the chip. And using a soldering iron, make sure it's clean. And using a normal solder, we're going to go all over that chip and just solder all the pins. This will add a little bit of lead to it. Just you'll see if I've got a solder ball in there and just go through it all. This will collect all the lead free solder and will also ensure that there's lead, a little bit of lead added to the pins, which will make reflowing and um, soldering it in general a lot more easier. So just do all this. My soldering iron is set to 300 degrees. So just going all over the pins and that will ensure all the pins will have nice tin. Don't apply too much pressure either because if you apply too much pressure you may damage the uh, solder resist and you'll have a nightmare then. So now that's done. Now we're going to clean it up with a solder wig. So use a standard Chinese solder wig. We're going to add a little bit of um, RA flux. Let me just cut this end off. Just a bit of RA flux onto it. Then your soldering iron and just get all the solder from the chip. So now that all the solder is gone from the chip, it uh, will probably be better once I clean it you will see that there is nothing left it's absolutely flat so we'll let it cool down while the chip is cooling down we're going to do exactly the same thing to the motherboard or in our, our case video board so just go all over the place and get all the solder off all the old balls and just float your soldering iron almost no pressure because if you apply the pressure you might again damage the solder resist and that will be a nightmare for you. And after you've done that, using a desoldering wick again, we're going to uh, clean up all the solder. Do take your time with it, don't rush because you're not doing it, you know, uh, some, it's not something that you do every day. So take your time if you want to do a really good fix. It does take time, don't rush it. Because if you rush it, you will pay for it. Trust me, I've uh, done that before. Okay, so this has been cleaned up now. Uh, it took me about five minutes. Obviously, I didn't bore you with it, but, so I've skipped a little bit. But it took me five minutes to clean this up. 
So we'll let it cool down. While that's cooling, we'll return to our chip. And let's clean it up. I use a paint thinner. And you can use a cotton bud. Just first damp the chip over the paint thinner. You can use stuff like Flux Off or there's a branded expensive stuff, but uh, paint thinner is really works really well. Removes all the flux very nicely. You will also want to clean not just the bottom pins of the chip, but the top because during the uh, soldering process, as you can see, the tissue is stuck to it. You want to clean the chip all over the place and the sides of it as well. Uh, that was, uh, by the way, if you see red, that's a red texture that was uh, marked on that chip. And that's what's coming off. It's not blood. So after you finished cleaning it with a cotton bud, uh, just grab a paper towel or tissue. And uh, again, using a lac lacquer thinner, just clean it properly everywhere. And the chip will be ready for the next step. So let me just show you. That's pretty clean now. So let's have a look at it really close. So as you can see, the chip is now really nicely cleaned up. All the tracks, there is no solder left in it whatsoever. It is nice and clean everywhere. And ready for reballing. So we'll put that aside and get the board again back on the table and do exactly the same thing with the board. Uh, if you don't have to, don't remove um, the captain tape um, that you've placed because we will need it for re-soldering again. So I'm going to take a cotton bodice again and do exactly the same what I've done with the chip. And just like with the chip, use a paper towel or a tissue and just clean that area completely. So there we have it. It's really nice and clean. All the pins are nice and clean. No solder left in them at all. So the board is now ready for reflowing, but we will return and reball the chip first. In this step, we're going to be reballing the chip. I've invested in this little nice uh, device. It's, it's just an aluminium frame, and you can buy it as a kit that comes with uh, the frame. It comes with the stencils, all sorts of different stencils, and it comes with a pack of um, uh, bowls from China, all different sizes as well. So we're going to first install the chip uh, in, the, in the jig. So what I've done, usually that comes off as a one piece. Uh, and that's where you sandwich your um, stencil. They are called stencils, by the way, so you can't use a hot air gun on them or anything. So what I've done, what do you, what I usually do? This is my way. I separate it and I put that frame back on. Now we're going to install the chip. So as if you notice here, there are two of those. Um, holders that are blank and two of them got little springs like this one and this one held by the screws. So those ones you usually leave them, well you leave them all loose, just slightly loose and we'll take our chip and center it. So once you've centered those two then using the, the rest of them you just tighten it in the jig And the chip is sitting there quite nice and firm. So now we're going to find the stencil. You can simply, if you know the size of it, uh, you can just uh, pick one because the stencils are all marked here. Or you can simply just approximate the size and, you know, just place this one and see if the pins match. If they don't match, then you grab another one. So in this case, I have found uh, L009. It's a 0.6 millimeters, 30 by 30, and 30 by 30 is slightly a bit too big. My chip is actually 28 by 28, so I'll show you how to align it, and I'll show you uh, what I mean. 
So as you can see, all the pins are matching except uh, the, the side ones are blank. So what I do in this case is take a simple sticky tape and you simply tape the pins that are not used. So in this case, we're going to be taping one row on each side. All the pins that we're not going to be using are taped now. So what I'm doing next is, remember how I've put that here before, the, the second part of that. So I'll put the stencil and then we will put, by the way, that notch is so you can drain the balls, the excess balls. Uh, usually I use it towards me, but you can put it any way you like. And now we start screwing it in, but do not tighten it, leave it loose. So just all the screws, enough for it to grab the frame. And now, as you can see, the stencil inside can still move around. This is a trick where you align the stencils to the chip. As you can see, you can move it, and you can perfectly align the... Just trying to do it on camera. There. So now we've perfectly aligned it, and now we can tighten it. Okay, so it's tightened and it's not going anywhere sideways. However, you can notice that it is a bit clumsy this way. And there is a little trick for that as well. So when we take it off, depending on the size of the chip, as you can see, it's wobbling and we don't really want that to wobble. Plus, it's the best when the grill itself is not sitting on the chip, but it's just slightly above the chip. So it's not, it's just leaving, as you can see, it should be sitting like that, not flat like that. So there are four screws here on the sides, the black ones. And we can slightly lift them up to support the stencil. It takes a bit of adjustment. And let's try. So we need a bit more adjustment, it's still wobbly. There we go, now it's not wobbling. You can press it by the way, but you don't want to press it just yet. And now as you can see, there is a little bit of space there for the balls. So before you put the balls in, take that off. Take your RMA 218 flux, and using a finger, just dab it in, a, in there a little bit, and just, that's probably even a bit too much, so I'll wipe that off. And just rub it all over the chip creating a thin layer. You don't want to create, you know, a thick layer or anything. Just a thin layer all over the chip. And I'll show you in a reflection, you'll probably be able to see. As you can see, that's the layer we created. Just a very thin layer. And now we can put the stencil on. So this is uh, 0.6 millimeters, so we're going to find the 0.6 millimeter balls. So here is the 0.6 millimeters. And we're going just uh, going gonna just pour them all over the chip. Then we'll grab that and we'll just spread them all over the place, letting them fall into the dedicated holes. Also taking a note, that chip, uh, the corner ones, so we've taped a row, and also the corners, as you can see probably just here, that corner one, it doesn't have a pin, so we'll have to remove those four balls from four corners. Not all chips have that, but uh, depending on your chip, note where there's no balls, and you don't want to leave the balls there if, uh, if there is no pad. If you have a couple of balls left, you know, like a couple of odd ones that are still not falling in, just you can do it by hand and just help them with, uh, with a tool or with tweezers. Once all the balls are in their uh, dedicated holes, simply just tilt it and get all the unneeded balls to one side. You can help them a bit, sometimes they get stuck. So all the balls now in the corner here, and you can see the entire field is filled in. And like I said, the balls are not sticking out, they recessed in down there. Uh, but not recessed now that they're getting loose underneath the stencil, they're just recessed to st so stencil is holding them in place and thanks to those four screws that are underneath there. So what we're doing now is just wiggle this around a little bit to ensure the balls get stuck to the um, flux underneath and then using those two handles we're going to push it down 
There's a few balls left, so what we're going to do, we're going to do them by hand. So as you can see, all the balls are transferred in, but there are a few stuck in a stencil. So you can take the tweezers and just manually place them to where they're missing. So all the balls are now in there. Do not sneeze because <laughs> you will <laughs> blow them off. They are stuck by flux. Uh, so then we're going to take whatever we have here left and we're going to put it back in a bottle using that little um, exit slot. And uh, we're going to use an air gun set to 300 degrees. Take all the air to minimum. And then from around 10 centimeters away, using no, no ends required, just from 10 centimeters up, and slowly start uh, heating the chip up. And you will see the balls will start slowly moving and get it closer and closer very slowly. Also you want to do it all the way up from up to down. You don't want to blow them to the side or anything like that and slowly start heating it up. You will notice the bolts will start popping into the, pl into the spots. I'll see if I can capture this corner for you. Yeah, you can see them just popping into their respective spots. If you're looking from the side view, you will definitely see them getting shorter and popping in the spots. So once you are preheated it and popping and uh, soldering them and uh, reboiling them, your air gun should be around maybe two centimeters away from the chip and uh, heat it up equally. Once you believe that all the balls uh, are sat properly, the best way to check it is to grab it and look on the angle like that. If you see, well, proper angle, I just don't want the chip to fall out, uh, but you will see that uh, if any of the balls, let me see if I can see and then I'll show you. Yeah, they all reflowed fine. So if you're looking at it like that and you see one ball, there's an end there, one ball that is higher than the others, then that ball needs a bit more heating. But in our case, as you can see, they sat on the uh, chip really well, and really nice. So the chip is ready to be reballed. So now that the chip is uh, done, and all the pins are on there. We're going to take a piece of paper. There's a ball in there. We're going to place the chip uh, pin side down and we're going to rub it like that, just holding with a couple of, uh, there's a bit of a something underneath there. Just holding it down and rubbing it in any direction. You'll notice there'll be lead traces like this on the paper. And what that does is uh, Polishing the ends of the pin or the balls that they are flat. This will also stress test your pins if they any of them didn't solder well they'll fall off and that's probably look I'm covered in the balls. Um, uh, they will probably need to be resoldered. It's better to notice that they fell off now you know than uh, during the reballing process. So in this case all the pins now flat on the slightly flat on the bottoms and they're all holding in. So now we're going to uh, clean it again. So we're going to grab a cotton bud and more of a lacquer thinner. And just again, drench all the pins. And that will also show us, show you if any of the pins are just holding there by a flux or not, if they actually soldered to the board properly. So we're going to clean the chip and at the same time, see if any balls will fall off the chip. If they do fall off, you can just apply a little dot of flux on that spot where it fell off, put a new ball in in place and uh, solder it again. You don't have to redo the whole chip. So in our case, it looks very nice and everything is holding into place. 
so there we go. Yes, let's have a look at it. So here is the rebolt chip. As you can see, all the balls are holding nice. And the chip is nice and clean. Now let's put it on the board. So we're going to take our RMA type flux, uh, dip our finger just slightly, oh that's a lot, maybe about that much of flux, and we're going to rub it onto the chip itself as well. That's a bit too much, so I'm going to wipe a little bit off. We're going to create just a slight layer of flux there. If you apply too much, it'll bubble up and it may displace your balls and uh, you'll have a nightmare. You'll have to redo everything again from the start. If you don't apply too much, they won't resolder. So we're just going to apply that layer. It'll be glossy. Let me show you on the light. You can see how much I've applied just around here. You can see it's all glossy there. So that's enough of flux to reflow properly. Then we're going to position our chip, noting uh, the correct way. And simply place the chip and align it to, um, it's probably, I don't know if I can do it on the camera, to the surrounding lines. So I think it's just there. So make sure it's within the frame as close as possible. I'm gonna do it also off camera to make sure it's aligned properly and just slightly press it in and it'll be held there by a flux again it's just going to be slightly held so don't you know move the board around too much so let me just realign it off camera okay the chip has been realigned properly and I've put the foil around it just on three sides like before and I'm about to put it in the machine very carefully and then I preset it to number one, which is SN965AG3CU05, and uh, press uh, start. And here is the beep that the chip is ready. So now that's done, we can turn the cooling on. And the chip sat there just perfectly. So be careful moving the board. Uh, I reckon just leave it uh, to, you know, sit and cool down before you start doing anything to it. Otherwise you might knock the chip off because it's still, you know, uh, the solder is still in a molten state. So leave it cool down and then we'll check it out. So the chip sat down really well as you can see really flat and nice you can't unfortunately see the pins uh, oh yeah you can just see them under there so it's yeah it's sitting really nice and flush so it's time to clean it up uh, you can remove now all your um, uh, tape masking tape well captain tape And again, using a lacquer thinner, just clean it up. So the chip is now done. And this is how you do the reflow. Uh, again, if you're doing it for the first time, I suggest getting a bad board and just trying to reflow the chip or old motherboard that still works so you can desolder it and solder it back in or start with a dead board and try reflowing the chip and then move into some old and wanted board to do it for the first time to make sure that it uh, removes and goes back well and then you can turn it on and see if it works if it doesn't then you've got to practice a bit more it does take maybe five six time of reboiling before you get the gif of it so th there it is i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and like I will see you next time. My name is Max. Bye.